Welcome everybody to our live stream. It's Friday here on Leech Chess and Twitch. Asturbate, that's a weird story you're talking about in the chat there. You know, I've played almost 20,000 games. And I'm not sure anybody's ever sent me a private message during an actual game before. Maybe... I mean, I'm trying to think. Yeah, uh, Antonio, I forgot to tell you because we, we didn't get to your game the last time. And I had just left it for the first one for the, the stream last night. Um, I realized as soon as I started that you didn't know, so you couldn't couldn't join it. Yeah, I mean, once in a while, right? I guess. Yeah, I guess once in a while we've had a few people send me a message during during the game with with some comment. Spiegel Spiegel Gruber. Um Spiegel Gruber is gonna have to wait till I take the troll challenge. Troll challenge. All right, man. Spiegel. Sheber Vago. It means. Sheber, crusher. Sheber cutter. Something like that. Is gonna have to wait. We need a warm up game. I'll take the troll. If I had to pick between these two, to play my first game of the day. Yeah, Antonio, we talked about it in depth. Um, so, A5 definitely favors white. There's no question. It just weakens black's position. There might be some, you know, there might be some weird advantage of having the A7 square free or something, but it's terrible. But I was surprised that you didn't see, you didn't see Bishop C2 because I mentioned during the stream, I don't know if you saw it, it was so similar to that idea you used with rook takes a4 against me in the Scandinavian that um, I was kind of surprised you didn't see it right away. It's almost the same thing. All right, troll and roll. Yeah, you're right. I'm supposed to just take the challenges, GM tranquilizer. But I'm still not going to play Schieberspieler first. So whatever, man. It's my stream. I'll do what I want. I'm not going to play the 25-50 player when I just woke up. It's just not happening. Yeah, we're not supposed to take subscribers first. Thanks for reminding me of my own rules. You must have been here under another account before. Which one was that again? Maybe you can remind us. B3, close Sicilian. He lost training points yesterday, played some rated games at midnight. Not a good idea. five square it's basically a b3 Sicilian this is not so different from normal setup right only the the, the like four pieces on the Queen side are wrong they're actually pretty coordinating placements I mean this this isn't so bad my bishops on the long diagonal rooks useful Queen on c8 is not a problem, and the knight can pop out to c6, so it's like a normal game, basically. Really, really close to the normal position. Free beef.
But F4, F5 is standard. Standard closed Sicilian type of move. And that's correct. That is a good idea in general. I was actually hoping to play e5, but I changed my mind. I didn't like these squares. After you played knight e3, you're actually on the right track. Black will just have to live with that. F4 threatening attack, actually similar to what we saw with Bang Bang Drama analysis game yesterday, where he like hung his G-pawn on a mouse slip on move two. The setup similar, F4, F5, pressuring the long diagonal, this. I don't like E6 type formations against closed Sicilians or whites pushing F4, F5, there's no counterplay. Like, this doesn't do much. I can play b5 on the queen side. I really shouldn't talk too much during these 5-3 games and lose track of time, though. You must be pretty bad, GM Tranquilizer, to be afraid to reveal your... You must have done some pretty bad stuff to be afraid to reveal your true identity. I hate that, that you have to castle differently in Chess 960. Maybe, I maybe. Sudden Simon Williams like desire to play Bishop D8. He won't see it. That's how I lost to Lambert Ole. Everyone in the room saw Bishop A5 except for you. Thanks, man. Just not something you're encountering every day. Maybe if I play a6, he'll play a4. Please don't play a4. If you play a4, you'll slow down my b5. Don't do that, okay? If I have to, I'll play 98 to guard this. Antonio Morales just subscribed. Tier 1. VIP. VIP. Biding my time with Joe Biden. <laughs> Bidening. Biding in my biding bidening. That's hard to say. Bidening my time. Biding with Biden? That didn't really sound good. Troll will never fall for it. I feel like acerbate. Any suggestions for Wednesday? I thought about doing an opening analysis stream. I'm bored with the Wednesday theme. Black played bishop d7, bishop d8. Oh, that's like a park hustler trick. Astrobate, thanks for the donation, man. Astrobate donating 100 bits. Yeah, sh changing colors. That's a classic. Classic trick, man. The chameleon bishop.
Troll sees everything. Will, is there going to be something on Twitch trying to maximize the number of subs this week? I didn't see any messages, but maybe. I don't check my, like, Prime loot or whatever. Maybe Super Spooler saw something. Twitch Prime is now Prime Gaming. No, I don't see anything about that, but maybe. I'm not very much in the loop. So you're admitting, you're VIP and you're admitting you're watching Esterman? I know you play the... You, you want to play... You and Jim are, are secretly the same person. Jim's playing the Smith Mora. You're warming up to play the Smith Mora? Oh, okay. You just heard through the grapevine. Esterman always does that. When I, the one time I watched the stream like two years ago, before I really started like not liking him, he did that. He was like asking someone to give me a gift sub. I was sort of like, wow. He was like almost demanding one of his subscribers give me a gift sub. I was like, who does that? But maybe there is something going on, some sort of promotion. It's good because I have zero gift subs this week. Bruce Wayne says, good morning. Just wanted to say you were the first title player I ever played about eight months ago. You play five or six title players from Twitch challenges. It's always fun. Thanks, man. Bruce Wayne, a.k.a. Superman. I mean, Batman, whatever. Close enough. Yes, I know the difference between Superman and Batman. I'm sorry. Um, wow, troll, what's going on? Oh my god. Open sesame. My knight on e8 is less than desirable, but the other pieces are all good. I could play g6, knight, knight g7. It's appropriate now. Actually, this is perfect here. I chose just lost on time. I mean, you have to walk away. I guess with King G2. Just doesn't look great. Alright guys, I'm taking the challenges here. No subscribers first, just in order. If you have 100 games. He can't be whatever, can he? He was sort of mentally disturbed. Jim Tranquilizer doesn't seem that messed up. WJ Lou, thanks for the 500 for beer. It is Friday night, so I was already thinking, what am I going to do tonight? Boloslavsky Gambit. Never play a Gambit against a Materialist. Alright, what's up with this position? G4. G4. So 
See, this is what happens when you're not awake enough. You start to play random stuff without really thinking through the consequences. And, um... Hmm. I'll sleep when I'm dead. That's, um... Warren Zevon, yeah. I actually have that. Like, the best of Warren Zevon. on CD actually, but I think I threw away most of my CDs. Maybe I threw it away. It's so sad to collect this stuff and just throw it away. I was having an estate sale in the United States and they were like, just throw it away. Nobody wants to buy CDs anymore. CDs. I don't want to give you my bishop. Queen A5. Man, I was playing some Hearthstone. And now the stupid, this was like the other day, but the song from the, the game got in my mind and I can't get it out. What's a cheapo? I'm just trying to prevent you from castling, man. I'm just attacking F7. It's an anti-castling maneuver. What is the cheapo? Look at him going for exchanges. It has to be something here, my god. Knight e6. Ninety six, twenty six, Bishop G six. <laughs> um, the towel, towel sludgy in the house today. Towel sludge. All right, dude, you're gonna get timed out. I'm going to have to time him out. He's talking too much and he's like starting to quote engine engine valuations. It's just totally inappropriate. That's enough. It's totally inappropriate, dude. I can't even begin saying how much someone is plus three here or something. He's probably just making it up, but I have no way of knowing, and that's annoying. Who is that guy? I just want to know because they're extremely annoying. It can't be Arsenal fan. It can't be on whatever. And they want me to play this game of figuring out who they are. I don't care. Stop it. 
Oh no, see, I already blundered. Sheeper Spieler. It's not Bob. Dude, are you kidding? Arsenal is banned for profanity against the streamer and directly verbally assaulting me. But he's also misogynistic racist, so I'm cool with that. Whatever. No loss, really. What am I going to do? Attack. Shearer's Spiller is just too fast, man. I mean, I can't calculate that fast to, to find some sort of... complicated tactic. Don't want to play that kind of game. I'm lost here. Nah. Just doesn't work. I better not be plus three at some point in this game. I was good though, at one point. Damn, dude, even the engine move here? Really? Changed his mind at the last minute. Yeah, it was no plus three. But don't say that when all my pieces are active like this. There could be some sort of combination. I mean, that's totally wrong. To mess with my mind. He missed queen a5 on the previous move. I thought you had queen a5 here, right? So Sheeper Spiller made one inaccuracy. But I don't have enough. There's some compensation, maybe. I had to play bishop b1 right away. I don't know why I didn't. And, um... I'm two pawns down here though. So I do have tactics now. Finally a chance like 96. Whoa.
and now it's over. That was fun. Should have played Gambit style, but I'm still just waking up. Forgot who I was playing against there. Thanks, Heber Spieler. Well, it looks like if he goes king f8, I take his knight. Do I get two knights for the rook on d7, and his rook is trapped on h8. And I guess if he goes king d8, after I sack my knight, I can just, like, double my rooks on the d-file, pinning him. But you should check that with the computer. Um, it looked to me like it was fairly straightforward. He's probably losing on d7. Losing two pieces for the rook. We're just losing a piece. Knight f3. Um, Alright, let's play this. But he didn't have to allow that. That was just like one possible continuation where maybe I had something. But the gambit is, is considered to be insufficient for white. I played it a couple of times. Actually, I was un unable to win both the games where I played it. I lost to some Hungarian 2100 about six or seven years ago in the, in the Hungarian team championship. Against that guy, I actually got a really good position, got, got in time pressure, and, and I lost. And then the other game I played years ago against some Fide Master, I drew. So it hasn't been a variation that I've had any success with. But I thought maybe Sheeper Spiller would be asleep there. You've studied jet engines. In college. It sounds like the British might say at college. But as an American, I would lean toward in college. But it was silly to think that Schieberspieler would not have something prepared for that rather well-known gambit. But I wasn't really thinking. I just sort of reacted. The gambit's not enough. I couldn't even beat a 2100 with it. Alright, so e4. This one is not common. That's also a gambit. Pawn e4, knight e4, bishop f3, queen f3, queen d4. the same thing basically but maybe a better version for white actually god has already played it against you but it's nothing looks like you have figured out you've already had it three times yeah if you play the bishop f5 caro it's it's the only like gambit line really I was hoping I'd get more compensation, but it wasn't much. We can transfer to the French defense with C5. A sort of French defense. Nimzovich French with a tempo for white. If he takes here, I could take on e5. This is weird.
I think it's called your cuticle, isn't it? Troll. Cuticle on the roll. You have to talk to one of those nail specialists. I don't do nails. Um, Boyd's playing crazy here. That's Romanian for cuticle. <laughs> I don't know, man. Su Su Sumil Mitra is too over the top aggressive. A chess psychopath. But here I could get in trouble if I'm not careful. Sorry, GM Tranquilizer, but don't say like what the what the engine evaluation is during a blitz game where I have like a minute left. Yeah, but I mean, you're making me, you're affecting the outcome of the game, making me think you're, you're serious. It's not cool. I'm gonna spend at least another 30 seconds there already in time pressure guessing whether you're telling the truth or not. Twelve hundred. So he had knight c7 check here. We realize now after checking with the engine that you were joking. How the heck can I know that? All right. No, white is scary. Normally, like. Shiva Spieler is basically an, a human computer, but there is a possible chance he actually blundered. And I really could be plus three in one game, one day. I know as unlikely as it seems. How strong is white really? I mean, 1200? I don't know what I'm gonna do with this guy. What was the last game I had to this player? That was, what was that opening? Also D4? I played something weird with black.
No, I can't remember. He's a very good attacker. Check this move. getting mated if I took that pawn. It was just queen e8 mate, wasn't it? Mate in one. Unbelievable. I don't know what to say, but weight is really not 1200. I don't know. I've said this every time playing this player, but last time was a weird game. This was even worse. So I thought you should just take here. But I guess it doesn't work, okay? Black is in, in a good position. But somewhere I went seriously wrong. It looks unsound, it looks unsound, and then all of a sudden he has these nasty threats on this diagonal. This is over the top, though. Why can't we just play queen d3? 
I mean, G3. Stupid engine. I want to ban the engine for one day. There's no need here to sack the exchange. I mean, this this is a little a little much, right? What about in between move check? I'm just taking here. Okay, so that was that wasn't possible for him to play that. So this position here now, I'm up the exchange, but my king is trapped in the center, and I was freaking out. I guess I should have just played king d7 and a6 and kicked him out. Something like this. King d7 was much stronger. It was a big mistake to give him the a pawn. I don't know. I thought I was like lost or something here. And I was sure I was lost after f4. <laughs> oh my god. I was convinced I was lost here. It's not me. Oh my god. You guys are right. course. I should believe you once in a while. <sighs> okay, so takes is the best move. I just thought this was made for some reason. Man. So after that, he doesn't have anything. Check, king g8. I mean, my rook is out of play, but I'm up a whole rook. Wow. I mean, I could play h5 and give my king some squares. Well, it's not that easy, true. I mean, I'm not, you know, I still gotta watch this. That could be made if my queen moves away somewhere. He's got, he's got moves, but no knight c8. So he'd have to play like knight, knight here or something. But it looks like maybe I'm winning somehow. I know that's very convincing. I wasn't convinced. So only queen c6. Which I would have played. It's the only move I could see. But he doesn't want to trade queens here. Absolutely can't trade queens. And I'm threatening to trade rooks, so he's lost. I think this is the problem. If I trade any of his pieces off, he's lost. And, um... He can't avoid both exchanges. Trading queens and trading rooks. But I just totally freaked out. I thought I was lost. <laughs> like, lost, so... What can you play if you can't play? I mean, bishop e7, pawn takes e5, maybe would have been better, actually, if I had remained calm. I mean, probably if I'm gonna not take the bishop, like this would be better. Maybe this or something. If you can't take the bishop, what's the best move? Queen e6 right away. Queen b4, king g8. There's a lot of choices, actually. I mean, I was pretty scared of this position the threat of e6 check. I have this. Oh, man. I don't see anything, tactically. Alright, Morales is up next. I'd like to thank WJLU for the donation of 500 bits today. We got a gift sub from Antonio. Thank you for the gift sub. You can't get the gift sub. So. 
Why do you want your gift sub back? WJ Lewis just donated 500 bits, which is enough for a couple of beers. Don't take your gift sub back, guys. What's what's the suggestion? I mean, I need to play more. I honestly haven't been playing enough just on my stream and no games outside the stream since a couple weeks. Puzzles don't don't help, but I feel like playing is is more vital to calculation than puzzles. Puzzles is not the same as as playing. So the Antonio, oh man. Antonio, the guy in my stream, foot chess player, I think he's a FIDE master. And when I analyzed our game from last time, one of his games popped up. I have an idea. I can use that he played against you. If you keep playing the same variation, I thought about something. Much best for you. Ocean, ocean horror show. Das vidanya. Spasiba. Konyechna, konyechna. Da, da. Odin, Chitiri, Chist, Piat. I'm getting distracted. Krasivaya Babushka. That one's just for you. So this was, um, Stoliknaya. This was, um, I know that's not really a Russian vodka. I'm just kidding around. Gilfs. We're beyond that, man. Bishop E2. The Babushka. Bishop E2. So when I was analyzing my last game with Morales, he played D takes C4 here, which is a sideline that I always thought but I assumed isn't good for black. Skaj, skaji pojalista što. Nicha, horasha. Once I, I offered a draw to Grandmaster Alexander Golding in Russian, he was very surprised. But this was, this was like in 1992. I wanted to learn Russian so that my opponents, I could catch them talking during the game. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there was a lot of paranoia after the fall of the the Soviet Union. I messed up. Oh, I forgot. So foot chess player played... Foot chess player played knight c3 here. I gave away my secret... My secret prep. You know, after 1990, a lot of Soviet grandmasters immigrated to the United States. There was this one tournament 
when um, well, there was a lot of like bitterness amongst American players because they felt like the Russians were coming and taking away their prizes. And if these guys would meet each other at the tournament, they, they would naturally speak in Russian. And so I saw some cases of, of Soviet players like talking to each other in Russian outside the board, you know, smoking or something like that during the game. And some of the American grandmasters got really, really paranoid that the guys were actually talking about the moves in Russian while they were playing. There was this one case where one American Grandmaster just started like freaking out and accusing people of cheating and stuff. But actually, I think he was just, um, he was just an asshole. I won't name any names. Was this the exact same game we had before? I've got. I know I messed this up. So Nazi two. Wait, was this the exact same? I can't remember. It's similar. Ferruja once cleaned the Carlson spoke Norwegian during a blitz game. Carlson and who? Like, what is he like cheating with his dad or something? I'm talking about like two grandmasters speaking to each other. That does give you pause for thought. Okay, what's going on here? New rallies. There was just a lot of bitterness from American chess players who felt that they're already like not enough prizes and and um and the the Russians were coming and taking away what little like you know chess prize money there was. So there's a lot of bitterness in that time 30 years ago but a lot of it was unjustified I never saw you know I mean people talk about the games sometimes while they're they're outside smoking but they don't have to be speaking Russian to do that I mean I'm sure a lot of people cheated in English too it's just like happens now nowadays not so much everyone's suspicious if you leave the board in those days there was no fear of computer so so nobody like cared if you walked off for half an hour you know went to the bar came back I like those days that was fun you could walk around the tournament hall come back 20 minutes later you had two hours for 40 moves or something I actually really miss that The transmitting pole. Bishop f7, rook f7, queen b3. That's not going to work. Or is it? We have some interesting tactical possibilities here. Does this work? Absolutely not. Takes check.
After the stream, we're going to raid Shiver Spieler. Well, I have a million pawns, and um, it's hard for black to coordinate. I'm not sure if this objectively was sound or not. But at least it's practically difficult for black. But queen d5 isn't so, so great, is it? King and bishop versus king, bishop, and three pawns. Dude. I think it's a ridiculous rule. I mean, house rules in a lot of places where I play blitz, that would never stand. But um, but Fide stands by that. Lee Chess also uses that, that kind of rule. I don't like that rule. It seems absurd. I guess emotions were running high when that happened. Morales is getting good at, at bullet blitz, quick, fast chess. Is it technically class of cheating if you tell someone you think that you're better or worse equal while the game is in progress and the discussion of moves? Yeah, technically I'm sure it is. I haven't seen the FIDE or, you know, national chess rule book. I'm 100% certain that it's in there, in any kind of normal rule book. But but that's why I was angry with GM Tranquilizer, the fake GM Tranquilizer account, for saying I was plus three earlier during one of my Blitz games. Even if he's joking, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not a rated game, but it's definitely against the rules to talk about that. Anyway, yeah, yeah, even just just that much saying like I think you're better. People do it all the time, but it's totally illegal, of course. 
It's normal for people to do that. I mean, I've had lots of masters come up to me and be like, oh, man, I see you're totally winning. Or, you know, they're not even trying to cheat. They're just excited. Or, I'm totally winning. I think, I think you know, and they like to talk about other players' games sometimes. That's that's a very common thing. Talking about other people's games. I guess that's that's a gray area. Are you allowed to talk about other people's games while you're playing? You shouldn't really talk to other players. The old days, it was um, it was much more unclear. But I was reminiscing playing longer games, and um, over the board, the other day, and thinking about how nice it was to have two hours for like forty moves. And um, you'd had so much time, you almost had like extra time. But it was relaxing, you know, not not being like able. You could actually get up and go to the bathroom, and not worry about getting in time pressure. Hand throwing. What is hand throwing? Oh. This is a bad move. You have to recapture with the pawn. Strong pawn in the center. Fist throwing, but in what? In what? In what? Situation. Situation. You mean like fighting? People getting into fights? Fist throwing like punching. I'm reverting to a hedgehog formation here. Changing of the over misconducts. I don't think I've ever seen a brawl result, just arguments and threatening behavior. I almost got into a fight, but my opponent was, he wasn't looking to fight, but he pissed me off so much I was freaking out. It was a blitz tournament, though. I've told that story before. I started shouting at my opponent, like cursing at him in front of like a hundred people because he kept hammering my clock back. That was a, a questionable rule. He said I had made the moves with two hands and like multiple times. He claimed I, I wasn't allowed to, to use two hands to make the moves. I wasn't sure if in this tournament it was a rule or not. So he kept like banging the clock back and I just freaked out after like the second or third time. And I told him to go get the Arbiter. That was the closest I ever got to having a fight in a, in a chess game. I think as long as alcohol is not involved, people are usually pretty pretty normal I've seen a lot worse things playing poker when people get drunk but in chess tournaments for the most part no one's drinking so I've never seen an actual physical fight I don't think but maybe I'm gonna have to remember After all the tournaments I've played in, you'd think there'd be like at least one incident where people physically started attacking each other. I can't... Well, I don't play anything much anymore. I used to play online for many years. Sometimes I play for fun, cash, but I don't, don't take it seriously. But mostly I played tournaments and sit and goes.
but it's been four years since I played. Chess is my first love. I've played a lot of live tournaments, not a lot, I've played some live tournaments and stuff, but not, not in a long time. Bruce Wayne is doing a good job. Maybe I should shear that knight off. It's such a pity to trade this piece, though. I have a very small advantage here. Queen b7 and b4. Do I even have an advantage? Yeah, I mean, this, this, I don't know, this is dangerous for him. Well, I used to pay like $20,000 in rake every year for a couple of years. But, um, never like really high stakes or anything. I played in a few, a few like European poker tour main events. But I haven't played live since like 2016. Poker is a disaster now with COVID. It must be devastating. I've got this. But there's no way that Bruce Wayne should have should have allowed me to take on f3. I mean, if he just protects this pawn, queen d1 or king g2, his king side is now relatively safe. And um it's only the smallest advantage for white and for black here after b4. Yeah, he's not not paying attention to his king safety. But seriously, how big is the advantage um, if we look with the engine? Bigger than I thought. So let's say queen b7, queen d1. I was gonna play b4 and just like mess up your pawn structure. But I don't think this is that clear, you know. The computer says I'm clearly better after this. I missed this idea. To hit the a3 pawn with my bishop. I was focusing too much on b4. My advantage after that is, is relatively slow. All right, WJ Loof is in the, in the challenge crew here. Okay, this guy's challenged me to Raiden. I'm not up to that. Lebanon, five plus zero. There's no increment. Troll already played, so he's only like a last resort. All right, last time WJ Leaf played really well. So I gotta prepare myself mentally not to underestimate him. I don't remember what that opening was. When when we played last time. You were white? I was white. Oh yeah. What was that? That was weird Wednesday? I played some kind of unusual opening? I don't recall. So play as sharp as I can here with C5. Sharply. Troll roll is listening to Guns N' Roses. Let me guess. 
Where is everybody? Don't forget to gift subs. We're gonna have to start earlier. Okay, G3 is a good move, man. It's a good move. Very solid. I've had a tough time against this symmetrical English. The main lines are many. Knight C6, D5. I think we talked about this with someone. Maybe Schieberspieler likes D5. I think I've played queen to c7, or maybe I played a6 and queen to c7. If I could get to sleep normally, maybe I could start earlier. This bishop is a torture for black, you mean the long diagonal? Or mine? <laughs> My equivalency on c8. d5 is theoretically the best move that equalizes according to the computer here. But it may also lead to kind of boring positions, I'm afraid. But what does happen after d5? cd5, queen d5. Yeah, I guess d5, bishop g2. And then there's that line with like d5, bishop g2, e5. I've had some games on the stream with that. That's not boring, actually. That's quite sharp. I don't, I guess there is no really like easy way for white to get a boring position after d5. What's he gonna play? He almost has to go into bishop g2. Maybe I should play that. I wanted to play queen b6 here. It's not a great line. Probably best not to do that. D5 now, it's a Tarash. I'm not sure how good this is. <laughs> yeah, and Bishop on G2 gives white a lasting advantage. There's no way to counter that. It's a little too late for a counter fianchetto. So we just have to live with white having a good bishop on g2. Usually a Tarash type structure with d5 now. e3, d5, cd5, ed5. Knight c3. I guess e3, d5. Or I could play knight to c6. Internet back up. Knight c6. Knight b5 looks like off balance. He doesn't have bishop f4 now. So if he plays something like knight b5, I play d5. There's no follow up with threats against c7. So probably white needs to retreat the knight now. Like knight b3. It might be interesting to sacrifice a pawn here for white. Knight c3, knight takes pawn, pawn takes, bishop takes d4. Castles with compensation. That would be a cool line. You, you definitely have comp there. Or you can castle, sacrifice a pawn. 
Masturbate, you're weird, man. Why do you bring up Pop-Tarts and the fact that there's two in a package? We have a store on my street that sells them. It's funny, it's hard to come by Pop-Tarts in, in Budapest. Probably only a handful of places you can buy it, but one is on my street. What is the chances? Maybe you can go to like BJ's Wholesale Warehouse and buy like a huge value pack. Costco or whatever you use. Now what? Bishop E7. I'm not going to play Bishop E4 check and help him solve his bad bishop here. I can also castle and play a hedgehog type of formation with d6, which I did once in the game I won in the Hungarian team championship. But I think this is book, cd5, knight d5. It's more interesting to play d6 though, keep the tension. But white is objectively better, I think d6, e4 and we'll transpose some kind of Sicilian-like position. This is just a blender. I'm a blender! Blendering. Alex Blenderman. Yeah, I mean, this, this is a pawn. You don't have sufficient compensation for that pawn. You have some. You can play b3, try to play bishop a3. That would have been best. That's actually kind of annoying. You're playing this, and then what am I going to do about this diagonal? I guess I play knight b4. Okay. It's not that big a deal. b3 castles, bishop a3, knight b4, queen d2, a5, and you can't do anything to me. You've sacrificed the pawn long term. Blocking a lot of people lately. See my Facebook. I take pleasure in blocking far right nationalists. You know you're doing the right thing when you get far right nationalist trolls on your stream. before it looks wrong. I used to only get like perverts. What else? Now we got the political trolls. Can I just play d4? Is that even a good move? Wake well, out in time pressure and panicked and blundered. Panic blunder. 
Oh, you mean blocking people for suspicious play? I thought you meant like blocking people in chats. This is even more than a night. WJ Luffy, you did well. Simply made a silly blunder with the time pressure. I can see your mind. I knew you were going to play Night H5. That's the key to Bullet, right? Predicting your opponent's moves. Anticipating. So, the opening was interesting, and you played okay. I wonder about my d4 move. I felt you played alright until you sacrificed a pawn for nothing. This has probably been played before, no? There's no games? Wow. That's crazy. My move is a novelty. 8, 9, D5. Last chance for D5. How bad can be can be the move d5? It's probably like the best move for black. Look at this. Wait. Oh, it was there. It was number one for a second. Oh no, it's falling. Number two. It's number one. Stop. There's 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 games here. And nobody played d5. The problem is if pawn takes, you need to take this. It's forced. If I take with a pawn, I mean, my pawn is really pretty much done. After pawn takes, knight c3. I can try to sacrifice a pawn maybe here, here, here. You know, I have a lot of compensation. I've played games like this before. And also played against people. Maybe black can even go h5. There's tons of compensation for black. You have to take, though. This is far more aggressive. If I play knight takes, I mean, I'm playing for a draw. Actually, yeah, e4 is, is strong. So pawn takes, but that's an interesting position. Anyway, c5 wasn't, wasn't good. Got plenty of time left to play here. Hanish Burger, Praying Mantis. This name, which I can't say, Mari Lop. Mari Lop. All right. Troll's trying to trick me with another challenge, even though he already played today. That was pretty decent for white. I think it was... If I don't play d5, I have to play this sort of crappy hedgehog. And that's one time I had a very unpleasant game. Which I was just like miraculously able to win. Some old Hungarian team championship game. All right. Oh, we have good, good discussion of Yevgeny Viktorovich H4 Grunfeld yesterday. What do you guys think of for Wednesday stream idea for something different? Any suggestions?
d5. Sadamasa, one of the subscribers played this. It's a gambit, playable. Now you're doing what I ask? Cool. I have hip hypnotic effect on, on opponents. They can just play what I command them to play. Do the Bills archives. Yeah, I wish I had access to my... All my game scores are, are locked up. Actually, I have, I have games here from the last 10 years, but prior to the last... My older games are locked in a storage unit. I actually, in America, I had uh, someone actually come to me and request International Master Justin Sarkar sent me an email asking me to help him find this game he played against me from 30 years ago. But um, almost 30 years ago, it was 25 years ago. Something like 94, 95, 96, I don't remember. But I was like, sorry, dude, all my games are locked in a storage unit. Maybe if I can get back to the United States, I want to sort them out someday, you know? I would like to do that. It would be cool. Definitely. I have games from 1986. Um, definitely a fun project, though. Do 64 days and name the squares each week. Hollywood squares. History day stream. Someone else asked for something like that. I feel like I'm playing the, the Trompowski attack. Basically is a Trompowski. That's pretty weird. You know that? This is a Trompowski? Bizarre. I don't play the Trompowski. Is that a problem? D4, Knight F6, Bishop G5, G6, Bishop F6, E takes F6. Etc. But I never, never really liked that for black. The first time I faced Trompowski was in the 80s against this Fide Master from Canada. I think that was probably the first time I ever faced it. It wasn't until I already was playing master level players. It's weird. I played G6, Bishop F6. Didn't know what to do. He started designing an outside chesty and courtyard with two inch squares. No, I was just a 2100 player, probably. I'm not sure the guy was a Fide Master at the time. I think he became a Fide Master. He was definitely a Master, National Master. But I'm just thinking about it now, it's kind of weird that I... I probably played tournament chess for three years. 
I guess I was playing, I was playing um, for three years and no one had ever played the Trompowski against me. That is kind of surprising. But the Trompowski became popular around that time, I guess, like the late 80s was when Julian Hodgson started playing it all the time and it became this big fashion uh, around 86 around the time when I played this game it, I played this game in 88 maybe it just started to be fashionable so this is a, a very good position for white now he has huge problems with his white squares King f7. Actually, not a bad move. Maybe forced. Or not. Burger time. Mel Brooks. Yep. It's burger time. I prefer King F7. He had to take with the pawn because of B7. And now he's in a bad way. Carlson played the Trompowski around one of... I forgot about that. Against Karyakin. Oh my god. It seems like eternity ago. No, it doesn't work, Antonio. King f7, bishop f7 check? Wait, are you right? You know, it's funny, like, I was planning that, and then I decided it didn't work. Queen e7, queen b3, king f7. No, king f7, bishop e6 check. You're the same hallucination as me. Queen e6, queen b7 check, knight d7, and, and his rook is protected. I can't play bishop e6. I only get two pawns for the piece. There. That's what I thought at first, too. It's an optical illusion. His rook defends his rook. Ninety-four. This doesn't look good for black. The move of the day. I could play knight e4, queen e4, queen b7. That's sort of crazy. I agree, though. I, I give credit to, to Karyakin, but... It wasn't like it was better than watching Carlson play Anand. That's the only thing I'll say about his match with Karyakin. It was an improvement on match with Anand, matches with Anand, which were unwatchable. Because Karyakin tried, you know, that's the difference between Anand and, and Karyakin. The very critical element of trying was present. But you got to give Karyakin credit for trying. Anand just like went there to collect the money, which was really, he had no belief whatsoever he could beat Magnus Carlsen. I 
And if you can't believe you can win, then you have zero chance of winning. I firmly believe that. I mean, Karyakin tried, that's what I'm saying. It was close. But I still didn't... I didn't enjoy the match. He actually had a chance. Which no one expected. But I'm just saying I didn't really... You know, I don't really like their styles that much, so... I found the match with with Fabiano much more interesting than the match with Karyakin. I think Fabiano is a far more interesting player than Karyakin, so more dynamic and probably just stronger. He is number two in the world. But I'm not a big fan of Magnus, you know. Personally, as anyone who watches my stream on a regular basis knows. <sighs> this is painful. Honeysberger does not resign. Yes. And the rematch. So after Bishop G5 takes takes with the pawn. Is this a Tronkowski trance? Wow. No games. Now let's see. After E3 we suddenly have four games. And bishop e6 is a mistake. Give me the white square bishop. I'm not I'm really sure that taking the pawn on d5 there is better than e3 at the end of the day, but maybe. Alright. Troll and roll keeps trying to trick me. Praying mantis. Bishop e6 was a mistake. That ops color bishop position is awful for black. Guys, after this stream, I'm going to raid Sheberspieler. So stay tuned for that. Is, is Weekend Z going on? Today is like a rest day. Interesting. This is a rarely played line. I guess we can transpose to the um, Archangels. Sometimes people play like Knight G5. I'm not sure that's a great move. The best day was Wednesday. The rest of the day was Wednesday. Yes, I need glasses. Now knight g5. Knight g5 now, d5. I'm trying to remember. Still knight g5, d5. Yeah, I guess there's no refutation of this, actually. But it's like, no real benefits of this move order for black. Jim, what's up? The upset. Good to see you guys. But oh, Sheba Spiller is doing a Swiss. So stay tuned for that. Swiss tourney. Sheba Spiller Swiss.
I'll be streaming to 1.30, guys. So we're here for another 45 minutes. Now, every move we have to check knight g5. Every move it, it doesn't work. Knight g5, d5 takes. It's getting more interesting by the minute now. Now it's knight g5, d5 takes, knight a5. That still seems like it's okay for black. The problem is now white doesn't have to play h3. Princess chess played this way against me once too. White just disposes with the need to play h3, which saves me time. Your bishop will never be threatening to play bishop g4. So technically it's like slightly inaccurate, but I guess any sort of violent attempts with g 5 may not be that good. There may be some interesting stuff I could do there. Crazy, crazy or attacking style chess, but whatever. I've had games like this against weaker players and tournaments and stuff. I remember vaguely one in the 90s against an 1800. He was the tournament director at the Boylston Chess Club, Bernardo Iglesias. He didn't know theory too well, so he, I guess he thought this was a normal move order. But um, now knight d8 is possible. This is a very strange decision to put your queen opposite my rook. But knight g5 again can be met by knight d5, or sorry, knight d8. So it's almost like he's trying to get me to tempt in, into like knight g5. But black's position is is highly dubious. You gotta start looking for stuff like bishop d5 here. e5. Well, I mean, the chess world is pretty messed up, Warnaki. I would imagine that you've got tons of chess players who are out of practice, so the results are going to be pretty pretty random when you're dealing with players who haven't played over the board in like a year or something. I'm not expecting, you know, real good performances or consistent performances from players after these like huge layoffs and stuff. They've lost their whole routine. So like anybody could win a tournament sort of randomly. I would think results would be very volatile. In the midst of the global pandemic, it's just going to be like a big randomizer. So I wouldn't be surprised if maybe one player like Grand Elias did super well. Different people will react to the situation differently. Everybody should be rusty. I mean, they are playing online, but it's not the same. And they're also not used to playing long games now. And when you're rusty from playing long games, that's going to have a very serious effect. It's possible that some of them played long training games if they were smart. You know, they kept playing training games with their friends and trainers. And that would be the intelligent thing to do. If I was a top 20 player and there was a global pandemic and I knew it was going to end eventually, I would have been playing strong players in training matches while I was waiting. Maybe Magnus, maybe maybe he did that kind of thing, maybe not, I don't know. But Mag seems like he's been focusing all of his energies on this rapid online tournaments and stuff. You have only so many resources. I can't imagine Magnus was playing tons of secret training games with people. 
But maybe Fabiano or someone like that could have had time just in the downtime. It's also a good time to study, obviously. Black is messed up. Black is toast. He's lost here. But oftentimes the hardest thing to do is to win a one position. Right? It's not that easy to finish him off. E5, he's gonna like trade queens. Which sucks. So maybe he's not completely dead. I really don't want to trade queens. Black's play is highly suspicious. But e5, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, queen takes queen. I was really hoping for more. How about B4? <laughs> the Morales attack. The morality attack. I'm not sure if even Bishop A4 is effective. Knight g5 now. He still has knight d8. I just still don't see it. Does that change anything? Like after knight g5, knight d8? What does it change? I'm better here. Now he's going to trade queens. But I'm just in time pressure. I didn't see a, a, a killing move. I'm better in a lot of variations, but I just don't see a way to finish him off. He might be able to hold on with bishop d8. Maybe winning this pawn isn't so great. Somewhat paralyzed. I 
don't know. I mean, it looks pretty bad for black. But I still didn't win any material. But I am plus five. Plus five, purely positional advantage. I'm threatening this. That hurts. Only plus 5.2. Black has not yielded 6. <laughs> it's up to 6 now. That's not good though. The knight on a5 is out of position. Um, but did I have really like crushing attack? He gave up a strong point on e5. So I had e5 right away. Okay, so what's the big deal? E5 right away, he takes. I'm crazy, I had knight E5 there. Oh man. Yeah, of course. I just missed this. If he takes here, I'm taking on F6 with check. If he takes an E5, he's toast. So he's just lost after E5 right away. This is a blunder. You can't play knight E5, you have to play this. So here we would ask something similar to the game. Takes, and now d5. This ending is slightly better for white, but d5, interesting. That's something I wouldn't see with limited time. Okay, fundamentally bad game by black there, giving up the strong point on e5. Your VIP guy keeps telling you about E5. <laughs> Whoever that v VIP guy is, he's pretty good. Who is that VIP Norales guy? Never trade off your strong point. That's the moral of the story. Let's try to adhere to our belief struct structure. Antonio, take care, man. Thanks for being a great supporter of E5. Now it's my turn. This is a solid English setup for white. I've played this position with white too. Not a lot, but sometimes. If I trade on d4, <laughs> I can give up my strong point. A little different than the last game, but same principle. If I push, He can try to undermine it, I guess, with f3. So can I adequately support e4? e4, queen c2, bishop f5. e4, h3 or something like that, they can play. e4, f3. Pawn takes f3. Bishop f3. And he's playing for e4. That's the question. Long bishop is uh, long diagonal bishop strong, so c6, standard move. I've played that and had some bad games because my d6 got weak. So knight on bd7 is like old school. I mean, this transposes to the main line of the system probably. If I play c6, b3, and then like bishop a3, and I have weaknesses here. Lubomir Kavalek died this week, and um, he was a big King's Indian player. Had a lot of ideas in the 
well, what was called the Kabbalek system in the King's Indian with C6 and Queen A5, he developed that, helped to develop it with Soltis and others. But I've had problems in these C6 positions because this square is just really soft. He can attack D6 if I play C6. Got to be careful. So Knight on BD7 is like standard. But it blocks my bishop. <laughs> this is a weird square for his queen. He blocks his b-pawn here. And um, I'm not crazy about it. Don't put your queen on c7 unless you have to in these type of formations. But I don't often play like straight up King's Indian positions like this. It's basically a King's Indian attack reversed against Sicilian French. Queen b3 is a little weird. He's interfering with that b-pawn's movement, either to b3 or b4. King's Indian is always a good topic. So speaking of the strong point, he trades off his strong point on d4, which should be favorable for me. In general, he loses the influence over this square. I now have the possibility of knight c5, knight d3. Usually, Schieberspieler, in that kind of situation, I would use my dad's typical dad joke. Was that a threat or a promise? I'll be back. He said, I'm back. Sorry. I thought you said, I'll be back. He's back. All right, he's back, and he's got a tournament coming up at 1.30. No. What time does your tournament start? Schieberspieler. Schieberspieler. Spielfest. Can I do this? I think I had a hallucination. Not sure if that was good or not. Hallucinations are bad. Bishop g4. Could he have lifted that pawn? Oh, and I'm attacking his rook too. He's in big trouble. Could he have taken the pawn last move? We should check. It's possible this was a, a bluff. I mean, I saw I could take it, but I assumed I had a tactic on a long diagonal. Did I have a tactic? I wouldn't have taken it. Threat or promise. 2 p.m. The Schieber Spieler International. But White is... White has committed some fundamental mistake. By exchanging on e5. Now. Black is better. Now he wanted to open the file. But there's not. You know. A lot you can do with this open file. He controls an open file. Actually very typical in the King's Indian. That that open file doesn't do a lot. If you don't have an entry point. Then. The open file is just a theoretical. It's a theoretical advantage. That doesn't exist. Mariupol. That's what it reminds me of. There's some Russian city called Mariupol. Is that right? Knight f3 check. What about g5? Where's he going? Oof.
always play g5. Nothing bad can ever happen when you play g5. Dude, his knight is trapped now. He trapped his own knight. That's kind of funny. Double knight. Self-trapping knight. No assembly required. I didn't take his rook, am I normal? Wow. <laughs> I couldn't imagine like he just left his rook on pre-is like that, that's crazy. So I didn't take his rook. Wow, that's nuts. Not concentrating well when you don't see the brook is in capture very stupid move by me very stupid The mantle. Sheba Spiller doesn't even know who Capablanca is. So what's up? Knight E1 check? Whoa. There's like some sort of earthquake going on in my house. Looks like I just blundered. What is going on? Alright, I just blundered a pawn. Whatever. But there's also an earthquake. Not a real one, just imaginary. Am I getting lag again? Yep. We had crazy lag, now it's back. The lag monster. Well, this is awkward. And this is amazingly awkward.
I must have missed the mate somewhere. Can I see mate? How many mates am I missing? It's kind of embarrassing. How is this not mate? Really bad technique. I didn't see his rook was hanging on D1. All right. We got time for at least one more game. Hey, it's Miro. You're amazed. I guess having having an engine isn't necessary to be a strong player. Aster mate. But I do think it's making people, you know, computers are helping players improve faster today. The true geniuses wouldn't really need it. Hey, it's here we're playing the Rossolimo. I, I really blundered. I was stunned for a minute there because I didn't think that was going to happen. I thought I had some sort of knight fork on e1 and take his queen, but my queen was hanging and he would go into an end game where he was fine. So it was a really bad miscalculation. Miscalculation. And um, I'm lucky. Yeah, I think he had something there. He had better. He had pretty good comp. Maybe he was even like fine at some moment. I mean, computers were strong in the 2000s. They were still strong enough to like crush most people, even grandmasters. Stronger, as strong as most grandmasters. So this c4 is a weird move. He transposes into uh, bishop b5 check Sicilian somehow. That's weird. I don't think I've ever had anyone play that against me. There was a game of Fredojevic I had years ago. But I think that was different. Maybe 95 for me here. I'm supposed to play. I've had a couple games with GMs, Prodojevic and Kovalev, with similar lines. I guess 95 now is worth considering. Played a little routinely. No, it's amazing from players like 100 years ago how well they played. But these people were oftentimes geniuses. <laughs> Natural genius. There's no way that like Rubenstein wasn't just a complete genius. Um, his understanding of coordination. Doesn't need an engine. Study with practice with a chess engine to play like that. Morphe's amazing, though. What is the Cenopon lice? Like, obviously he was a genius, too, but... What are the Cenopon losses, like, in Morphe's games? Problem with Morphe was that his opposition wasn't that strong. He didn't have a lot of competition. Adolf Anderson just wasn't strong enough. To really, truly, you know, test him. <laughs> he 
Yesterday, Hayes Hero submitted a game to our stream where he overextended himself with E5. This has the same sort of feel to it. I guess now white's alright. Knight to e5? I still like black. I still feel like white is slightly overextended. But maybe it's not that bad. Howard Staunton. It's not a match for Morphe. No one was. If Steinitz had arrived earlier, but you know, that's physically impossible. What happens if knight e5? Do I play bishop e8? Keep my bishop? What about Cheeberspieler? What would he do? Would you keep the bishop with bishop e8 or just give it up with rook c8? What's the response there? No, DM, no GM. You should never ever play moves that are not the best moves in the hopes that your opponent will miss it. Astrobate does that all the time. Hopefully less than he used to. You've got to play where you give your, give your opponents like the utmost respect. You assume everyone is... I would assume everyone is good. Play like all of your opponents are Magnus Carlsen and they're going to be like seeing almost everything. There's structural structural weakness on this line. But it's kind of complicated. White's pieces are pretty active. Maybe ask something here. But I can play f6 and build my Bafanik pawn wall with e5. Bishop e3 is a surprising move. Connect four. Oof. I think I just blundered something. Wow. I just completely missed Bishop takes c5, and he has that. Bishop g7. Yeah, but now I have two pieces for the rook. Don't have to be super Grover to play this position. The black minor pieces are really strong. Missed the boat. Grabbing that. Give me that. Huh. 
high quality chess moves in this one. Both of us blundering. <laughs> Mutual blunder of Omaha. Why is there no forced win for black? Yeah, that's funny. I mean, there's no good move here for me. Dude, you were winning after bishop c5. I can't believe it. I was playing for a cheapo just when I got done, you know, saying you shouldn't play for cheapos. Couldn't he play like, well, bishop here? Bishop f6 just doesn't really work. So I should just build the wall. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's January 22nd, I'm talking about building the wall. Little Trump joke. It's all fun and games now. Then we got rid of him. He did get the worst chess for Christmas. 2020 Battle for the White House. Oh my god. Wait, your dad had a friend give him that set last year? Last year? That's perverse. Alright guys, I gotta go. We'll see if Sheber Spiller is ready. Shiver's player, are you ready? Ready to raid? I can wait a couple minutes. All right. I still got... We still got five minutes. No problem. Trolling a roll. This troll promises not to be a troll. I'll play a second game with him. He promised not to troll. I got a couple lessons after the stream, so I like to leave on time. A little early wouldn't wouldn't hurt. Master of the center. Already I like black after E five. Does anybody else feel like the center is more important in chess 960 than normal chess somehow? I just keep getting that distinct impression. Why is that? Why does it matter so much? I'm gonna try something crazy here.
No, yes. Goodbye, Center Pond. No more. I've got two knights competing for the same job. It's also going to be a problem for white here. How do you sort out castling? What do I do with my rook on d1? Thanks everybody for support this week. WJ Loof, Antonio, Astrobay, Kosh Maui. Appreciate your supporting the stream guys and girls. What am I going to do with these pieces? I want to play e4. Knight g5, knight f6. Knight g5 just feels wrong. Knight g5, knight d6, knight h7. Materialistic, greedy move. Just knight 60 is hard. Can I try this? A4 is a good plan from Edward L. Rick. Yeah, I mean, that's something you gotta be really willing to play. With a rook on A1, the middle school rook development plan. This is classic before you learn the rules, really, or when you first learn the, learn the rules. That applies more in Chess 960, where it's difficult to castle. A situation like this. It may be very difficult for me to castle. I like a4, a5. Alright, Troll, you can resign now. Shiver Spiller is ready. For the raid. Feel free to resign. Don't be afraid. I like a4, a5, or just a4. But I mean, it is part of my kingside protection. So it's not my first instinct to move that pawn in front of my king. I'm not afraid to, you know, make the odd rook pawn move. I want to play e4, though. I mean, that's my real plan. Oh, no. based on calculation. Highly unusual. Troll almost never calculates. I can't believe he, he actually... He couldn't have calculated. It was intuitive. The knight on h7 will be... will be out of play. So I'm going to finish this game and raid Cheaper Spieler. Maybe I should raid first. Probably wait till it's over. It'll be over soon. Don't worry. Troll already has 177 games. If he hadn't been timed out or banned for so long, he'd probably be over 200 by now. 
What? What is that? Letting your pawn structure just die. Poor troll just gave me a central pawn. Not good. Tactic. Wow. Alright. It's a neat move. Hopefully it doesn't have major effects. Long lasting effect. I could have played knight f2. Saddest troll. I think I like the saddest troll best. They seem like the most polite one. Knight f4. Best behave behavior among the troll accounts. Speaking of A4, I like that. No, but seriously, what am I doing about knight d4? I mean, it's nice, but it doesn't threaten anything. But it's a little bit of a pain to get it out of there. Now all this great idea of playing A4. Thanks to Evgeny, I played A4, and now I can't play C3. I'm leaving. I'm leaving now. Right now. We'll be back on Sunday with two streams. Thanks everybody for your support. Bishop d7, good choice. I need that gone. That must be gone. Be gone. Be gone, troll. For my stream. Troll be gone. Is this important <coughs> that my bishop can move? Do you think? That could be relevant, right? Why are you 1500 in bullet? Who are you talking to? I'm nothing in bullet. I've never played a single bullet game. You can't have a rating when you've never played a game. I will never play a bullet game on Lee Chess. Alright Troll, that was a bad game. One of your worst. Good job. So guys, we'll be back on Sunday with two streams.
3 p.m. CET streamer battle and simul where we welcome 25 players at 6.30 p.m. CET on Sunday. Thanks everyone for watching. We're going to raid Sheber Spieler now. Here we go. Have a good stream, Sheber. Sheber Vago. Sheber Vago. Cutter of Shebers. <laughs> 